Greetings, this is Frosty Thundertrot, and welcome to month four of my Play Along series, Survival Mode, Semi-Competitive on No Man's Land. My attempts to upgrade my video quality for episode three really went awry, and I ended up just uploading raw footage. So for right now, I'm going back to my old format here of just recording live and talking over as I do the actions, more Daggerwind style. What I was trying to do is kind of mix the Chainsaw 100 style with the Daggerwind style, and I was trying to compress uh, my gameplay down to about 20 minutes or so use, using uh, 4x speed, and then I would be talking over it um, post mm, and post game and processing but I couldn't find a, a video editing program that could both accelerate time and let me do voiceover work and was compatible with my video card so I'm using an old um, 5600 XT and DaVinci did not like it whatsoever it doesn't even acknowledge it's a video card so I'm going to go back to doing it this way for a while until I can upgrade my video card. Or if I decide to splurge and, you know, actually pay for something like Adobe Premiere or something. Let's get started here. As usual, I'm going to start with the mushrooms. I'm almost tempted to discontinue... The mushrooms, because they seem to be almost a cheat for how much product and how much they sell for, I get out of these for the relatively little input. I know they're not technically a cheat because they are part of the mod and so are fair game, but it just feels a little cheat-like to me. And I stumbled across somebody else on YouTube that's also doing a play-along series. I watched their first two episodes. Uh, their production quality is definitely a lot better than mine is. Now part of this, I'm not trying to do this professionally or as a gig or anything. I just like sharing games that I play, and nobody in my family likes the type of games that I like. My son's a gamer, but he plays mostly platformers and a little bit of Gary's Mod. First person shooters and like, I'm not really into that sort of thing. I like uh, strategy games, role playing games, and a few simulators. I've definitely found using this forklift to be much easier than using the pallet forks on the front end loader. I consider this a very good investment.
I don't even know it's not, I don't feel it's realistic to store up mushrooms all year until the price is the best, but it is part of the game, so I'm not sure if I'll start doing that later on or not, because I would think that after a point, since I'm not using the auto loaders, the stockpile of mushrooms I would have would be just insane. Maybe someday I'll invest in like a steering wheel. You know, something with analog controls might be easier to play with instead of the all or nothing you get from using keyboard. I have an old joystick I tried using, but for some reason it just it feels better. Because it feels more natural like when I'm using a front end loader at work. But the response just is not quite right. I think it's probably because of the age of my joystick. My joystick's an old wing uh, Microsoft um, Sidewinder, these things have been out of production for decades. I really liked them back in the 90s when I got my first one, but they're also not USB compatible. You have to use an adapter to convert them from old fashioned game controller, serial port game controller, to USB. Which may be why there it does not feel quite right. It might work better if I bought like a modern Thrustmaster.
Oh, I do need to make a change here to my settings. Darwin and Chainsaw are playing with seasonal growth off. Shieldstone, weed, seasonal growth. No. There we go. That'll make things easier with, on me because I need, I want to start actually getting into more agriculture here soon. I think I'm going to plant a wheat field first. I'm going to be relying on um, mushrooms and lumber to start buying up my field equipment. I got a good tractor, but I'm going to need a plow, a harrow, fertilizer, manure spreader. Probably even manure at first. And then the wheat give me the ability to feed chickens and give me some straw so I can move in the cows or pigs, but probably cows because cows are actually require a lot less different inputs than pigs do. Which is also kind of true because most cows, except for like the Holsteins, they need grain supplements. But most cows are what's called ruminants and they don't, they can survive off of just hay and grass, hay and grass. They don't really need grain. Although if you're trying to fatten up by like an Angus for a quick sale, they will quite often feed them grain to uh, just put more pound, more fat and more weight on them quickly. As for my personal farm, when I get around to doing cows for myself, I'm not sure if I'm going to go with the Red Pole or the Belted Galloway. I'll probably do a little bit of both at the first. Red Pole is a dual purpose breed for both meat and milk. They don't require as much milking as like a Holstein, which, you know, puts out four gallons of milk, has to be milked twice a day. Red Pole only puts out a couple of gallons of milk a day, and they only need to be milked once, so that's something, in theory, I could just get up an hour early for work and go out and milk the cow and then go to work. Still, I already get up at 5.30 in the morning. I'm not really looking forward to getting up at 4.30 in the morning. Just a minute, I got to sneeze. Hmm. Now, Belted Galloway are a beef breed, so there's no milking them. They're a smaller breed, and they do very well in just pasture. The climate here is a lot like England, so quite often I look to um, English breeds of livestock. Why is that tipping instead of loading? That being right on the shores of Lake Michigan, you know, we usually don't get the worst of winter or the worst of summer. And it's quite often quite wet here. Although not this year because that weird weather patterns where they've had those uh, high pressure ridges out over the plains just trapping all the uh, storm systems out there. Well, the forecast is showing next week uh, quite a bit of rain, but we'll see if it actually makes it way makes its way through or not.
It'd be kind of nice if those two breeds were in farming simulator. I think what I might do is when I get my first two head of cattle, I'll probably just get one each uh, steer of Belcher Galloway and a, a Red Bull, Red Pole, not Red Bull, Red Pole steer. You know, so that way I can finish them out here on grass on the farm and compare the meat and the results and, you know, an idea of their care, of course, each individual animal is going to be, it's going to divert from the species norm somewhat, but give me some idea of what they're like to handle. Now, another great thing about having dairy cows is, uh, I can't, my family won't drink that much milk. And to be honest with you, I've had farm fresh unprocessed milk. And unless you're used to drinking it, it just tastes nasty. It really, really does. But animals like pigs and chickens aren't ruminants, so they can't live strictly on pasture alone. They, de they need some sort of extra protein. And one of the sources of protein you can give them is milk. You know, so all the milk that um, my a Red Bull um, cow was producing that I couldn't drink, I can feed to the pigs or the chickens, or even the ducks, to help sustain them without having to bring in outside feed. I'd ideally like to be able to sell, you know, my products at some point. But for now, I'm focused mainly on just um, keeping my family fed. So that we're no longer depending on stores and shortages. So that was kind of annoying there for the last three years where you go to the store and you have to figure out what they have instead of what you want. I mean, that's, that series is over now, but I think it's always going to be in the, my mind and the mind of my family, you know that that can happen again. I mean, probably Billy won't be in my lifetime, but it's always a possibility. Now these planks, unlike the mushrooms, it's entirely reasonable to store these up and sell them for the best price. But right now, since I'm in a building phase, I need to get everything to market that I can just to build up the farm. And planks will sell for more than raw wood anytime. I think over there where I've been cutting the trees on that hill overlooking the lake, that's where I'm going to put my eventual house. And then around it I'm going to put a vineyard and an olive orchard to be more scenic and give me a more diverse production. But I want to get wheat in the ground and start a grass field so that I can get chickens and cows going.
<laughs> Just topping out these pellets of planks as fast as I'm loading them up. Of course, my trailer's quite a ways away. Let's go get the tractor and get these off to the market. Then I'll come back for a second load of planks. Hey, I don't want you in here. And while I'm at the market, I'll check on um, the sales and see what's available for used equipment. So far, I haven't bought any used equipment because there's nothing re been really available that I need right now. A few things have popped up that would be handy eventually, but... Alright, everything's bound down. Let's go. And eventually I'm going to need a faster way to transport stuff. <coughs> Not really used to talking this much, so it's doing quite a number on my throat, making me a little coffee. Maintenance wise, I'm looking pretty good. Fuel is still okay. Imagine that'll change once I start plowing and tilling and all that other fun stuff. Oh yeah, 31,291. That was a nice harvest. Alright, let's go see what's on sale in the market. Let's see. Ooh. I kind of like this dump trailer. 
I am going to need one of these. This is part of a mod. I like the truck that goes with it, too. Really, it's like somebody took a 10-yard dump and they just put it on a trailer frame instead of on a truck chassis. Main color. New Holland. Design color. White. Room color. Gray. Hmm. Or should I go like this to match my tractor? Kind of make this my farm color. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like the lines. I'll go ahead and buy this. Alright. Now, let's see. I'm going to need a plow. Two bottom, only half a meter working width. I can afford this one. A hundred horsepower, I got that. Let's check subsoilers. Well, subsoilers are a lot cheaper. They count as plows. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll buy this one. After that, I'm going to need some way to pick up the rocks. How much is a rock picker? I know it's around here. Stone picker, there we go. 25,000 is the cheapest one. For the time being, it's just going to have to wait. <laughs> I bet you I can use my logging grapple to pick up the subsoiler and take that back with me this time on this trip. Let's give it a try and see. Maybe if I hadn't knocked it over, I should have been able to grab it. Let's see if I can tip it back upright. Yay! Oh, nope. Maybe.
seems like I should be able to hook right through the center there, but I know it's not usually the way the collision model actually works. I think I'm going to do is unhook this trailer and see if I can hook up to the subsoiler. Okay, I got to set back upright. Yeah, <laughs> got it. Be careful here not to flip it off or something. Turn on cruise control and away we go.
I'll drop this off and then I'll go load up the rest of those wood planks and then head back to the shop to sell those then bring the trailer back empty and come back with and get my new dump trailer There we go. <clears throat> I got the first thing I need to start making a field now. But I'm still going to need uh, a rock picker, a planter, a roller. Uh, probably a harrow. I'll probably just get a disc harrow because disc harrows don't add any additional stones like a traditional cultivator does. power hoe. Wow, it's just kicking out planks like crazy. I need a manure spreader to fertilize my fields. Uh, probably a fertilizer spreader too for lime. I'm not going to use chemical fertilizers. I'm just going to use natural fertilizers, but uh, I still have to be able to spread lime. And it's not part of the official rules, but I'm going to impose a rule on myself that before I can use a worker, 
have to put up a residence for them to live in. Because this is literally no man's land for a reason. There are some people that work up at the shop. But they don't, actually, they don't come out here unless I ask them to deliver something. I'm not even sure how there truly would be a no man's land in this day and age, but I can see it maybe in the western United States where you have an old town that used to be like a mining town or something, or a railroad town, and the railroad went away and the town just died out. And just no people there anymore. Or just one or two people. I think that's actually happened in a few places in the Dakotas. There were old um, railroad towns or mining towns and they basically turned into ghost towns and then fracking came along and suddenly people started moving into these old ghost towns that had been sitting empty since the 1920s or the 1930s. Maybe that'd be a good map idea. Or another way is, sooner or later we're going to have like O'Neill cylinders and stuff in space to live in. And, you know, the first few people that move into an O'Neill cylinder, well, they're going to be there kind of by themselves. And I would think almost farmers would right after the people building it farmers would probably be the second group of people to arrive because while it's relatively cheap to you know send products from space to earth since you can just use the atmosphere to slow it down and you know just drop it in the ocean sending stuff like food which you know requires massive amounts into orbit is very expensive so it makes sense that if you build an O'Neill cylinder that you know after the construction crews are in you know next group would be a, a few farmers to start producing food to build up a food stockpile in place and then, you know, the rest of your colonists can start moving in. That'd be kind of an interesting mod, too. You know, uh, Farming Simulator 22 or 25 mod, where instead of looking up and seeing the sky, you see the other side of the cylinder. So it'd be like, you know, when you fly over farmland, that uh, quilt, patchwork quilt appearance. course seasons would probably end up being off by default because unless the residents you know decided they specifically wanted to have seasons there's no reason to have seasons you know it can be 70 degrees with you know 30 percent humidity every day Depend on how you do your irrigation, you might add rain or you might not add rain. I think Michigan's probably the only place that still really does massive amounts of center pivots. They've kind of kind of gone out of style out in the plains or out west because of the depletion of the. Uh, Ogallala Aquifer, but here in Michigan we're just surrounded by fresh water to the point where we almost have more fresh water than we know what to do with. So center pivots are still fairly common here. I 
go on an O'Neill cylinder, you might just spray the water into the center of the uh, cylinder and then let it uh, work its way around. Of course, the very center, there would be no gravity, so it just sit there as kind of like a bubble, but eventually air currents and stuff would move it around and it would get into a place where spin gravity would start to pick it up and pull it to the sides. There we go. Should I grab some more mushrooms or leave them for tomorrow? It's one o'clock in the afternoon. I'll leave these mushrooms for tomorrow. Looks like I need to put some more wood in the wood in the mill now. Fortunately, I'm set up very well to do that. All right, another 11,624. That's almost enough for me to buy that stone picker. Not quite, but almost. I can get it in the next episode, certainly.
All right, let's go get my new trailer. Now let's see what sort of things they sell over here. I'm probably not going to buy anything, but I am interested to see what is in here. Alright. Uh, chicken food. Well, that's good to know. I can use, maybe I'll get into my husbandries a lot sooner since I can, you know, buy TMR and pig food here. But for today, I want to get started on a field. It's going to be probably two episodes before I can actually plant anything in it, but I can actually, well, I can get started in an episode. Got a cat climbing on me here. I guess it wouldn't be one of my YouTube videos if I didn't have cats all over me the whole time. At least so far he's not actually stepping on my keyboard.
I'll put this over here by the sawmill. Because if nothing else, I can use it to sell wood chips out of the sawmill. I need to start developing a system of organization around here, but so far I'm just putting everything kind of near the tent. One thing I like is having nice straight and square fields, which is kind of nice with the subsoil because it lets you do straight lines a lot better than uh, a standard plow does. But as a visual guide, I like to use a little bit of landscaping. gravel all right that's a square that's good Huh. Why is it not removing the grass? It should be removing the grass. But it's not. There we go. That's wrong.
No, that's wrong. Okay, there we go. No! Over here, not over there. Two more over. Okay, that will give me a rough idea. Okay, this will give me something to aim at to try to keep my fields nice and square. Alright, allow create field.
So I'm wandering a little bit too far over that way. However, the white tractor is handling this subsoiler nicely. We're even slightly going uphill here. It's good. Once I get my perimeter set up, it goes a lot quicker. I just like nice, neat fields. Plus, it makes it so much easier to run a worker in. Ah, damn it. There we go. Oh, damn it, slipped over again. Oh, that's a bird. Oh, there's the helicopter. Well, truth be told, it sounded more like a small airplane than a helicopter, but eh, it'll work. Alright. 
Okay, let's see here. So I need to fix. There we go. This side is all nice and straight now. Move the tractor around a quick like while I go deal with this tree right here. I don't have any way to take that stump out, but hopefully I'll be able to work around it. This might seem a little anal retentive, but I think in the long run this actually saves time and money because your workers won't be getting lost and turned around all the time. Won't be spending so much time trying to figure out how to turn around.
You would think that you could just set up a straight line and go, but it just doesn't seem to work that way. I guess that's kind of true in real life, too. Equipment's always trying to pull one way or the other. Wandered over again. the worst way this time. <clears throat> Okay. Damn it. Get back over there. There we go. <clears throat> no, 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 no. If you're gonna wander, please wander in, not out. Uh... 
All right, so that wasn't so bad this time it wandered in. Getting close to the end of this episode now. There it wandered out, damn it. Get in. Wandered in, not so bad. No. Wandered inwards. Okay, we're doing good. Good. Oh, wandered in. Wandered out. Okay, now all the picky stuff is done. My cat's going after my computer cords again.
All right, that went well. Got two more trees in here. Looks like they're gonna have to be trimmed out. That's pretty good speed this way. Oops. And there we go, that's that. The row done. Yeah, this tractor's handling, handling the subsoil are pretty good. It's just running at its maximum work speed of 7 miles per hour, so. I'm going to hold on to this for the rest of the series, because I will every so often have to plow, and subsoiling counts as plowing.
I'm going to call this episode to a close once this field is done or reaches 20 hundred hours, whichever is first. Two hours left.
light setup is kind of bad. It shines back away from the tractor, but doesn't shine right up here by the tractor. I'm going to grab this tree here quick like. Looks like I'll have no problems finishing up this field. Listen to that engine grunt. <laughs> It's digging in and doing it. Yeah, Oliver and um, later on White often used other people's motors. Oliver did quite often try to develop their own motors, but um, they were being so cash starved by White that they usually end up using somebody else's motors. Perkins made a lot of motors for Oliver and White, uh, so did Continental. Um, a lot of the Oliver Combine shoes on um, Dodge motors, which I can kind of see that. The Dodge 318 is a pretty solid motor. What uh, Dodge always really struggled with was transmissions. I think they even put GM and even Ford engines in sometimes. Although Ford probably to a lesser extent since Ford on and off again made their own tractors and would be less willing to sell engines to a competitor. GM however I don't think ever really made their own line of tractors. So they'd probably be more willing to sell engines to a company making tractors.
it shrunk out every little bit, I did. Hmm, I don't know what that was, but it sounded vicious. So. Let's check the map. Stones, yes. Lots of stones. See, cultivated cloud. Yep. Turn off my lights, shut off the engine. And I'm gonna call it a night. Thank you very much for watching.